Hello, this is a follow-up video to my test of the Bollinger Bounce strategy. In the test video, I said that I would be following up and show how I wrote the code for that test. So today I have the code here. This is just basic code to run the strategy tester. I haven't included many of the things you would have for error handling that you would want if you actually want to run this kind of code live. So this is just code for running strategy tests and evaluating this strategy. This is the video for MetaTrader 5. I have a similar video for MetaTrader 4. You don't necessarily need to see that if you're not interested in the MetaTrader 4 video, but if you are, then there will be a link in the description or the comments to the MetaTrader 4 video. So let's get straight into writing the code now. Now I have MetaTrader 5 open here. I'm just going to open the IDE. I can either click this icon for IDE or I can go to Tools and MetaQuotes Language Editor or press F4. I just prefer to click the icon. So now the MetaTrader 5 editor open. Under Experts, I already have a folder called Orchard where I put most of my work. And I've already created a Bollinger Bounce folder. Now, at this point, you might use the wizard. So you'd right click here and go New File and run through the wizard. I'm not going to do that because I don't use any of the features of the wizard and I typically then reformat the file when I've finished. So what I do more often, I have here in Files, Templates, Experts, I have a template MQ5. I'm just going to copy that, Control, Drag and Drop, rename that template. You can see I've already done this for MetaTrader 4. And now I open that and I have the template here. I just need to change a couple of things. Now, some of the standard things that I have in the template. Uh, it has the comment block at the beginning, slightly reformatted from the one that you'll get if you use the wizard. And feel free to use the wizard if you prefer. This is just the way I do it. In the inputs, I have some standard inputs that happen pretty much all the time. That's the order size, magic number, and trade comment. And you can see that the magic number and the trade comment in the inputs here use app magic and app name. And these are the two defines that I have here. So I just like to get that out of the way at the beginning of the code. So I set these up here and they flow through. Copyright, link, version, and description are typical. You'll find those even after you've used the wizard. I've just got them already filled in here. And then of course I have the inputs with those default values or the standard inputs that I use, the order size, magic, and trade comment. And I almost always use the trade object. So I have the hash include trade slash trade.mqh. This file comes with MetaTrader 5 and it gives me access to three classes, the C trade class, C position info class, and C order info class. I may or may not use them, but I'm declaring then three variables of type C trade. I'm calling that trade, C position info, I'm calling that position info, and C order info, which I'm calling order info. And then the standard functions on init, on dinit, and on tick. They also exist if you've used the wizard, but there'll be some comments and a little bit of formatting change. But otherwise, these are the same functions. The Bollinger Bounce Expert uses three indicators, two exponential moving averages and the Bollinger Bands. So first I'll declare the inputs for the fast moving average. Now I'm referring to the fast moving average as the moving average that has a shorter time span or a shorter period, mainly because it will react more quickly to price changes. So it's the fast moving average and the moving average with the longer period is the slow moving average. So a moving average typically has four values. There's the period, which the default here is 50, the method, which I'm declaring as an enum ma method, and that's mode EMA by default, and the applied price, also enum applied price, and I'm declaring that as price close. The fourth value, which I don't use, is shift. So I have no need for a shift, so I'm just not going to bother to input it here. So with the fast EMA, then I also have the slow EMA. I'm just going to copy this and change some names. So the slow EMA is just the same as the fast, but I've changed the names and the period for the slow EMA by default is 100. And then the inputs for the Bollinger Band. I have the Bollinger period, which is an integer, 
the Bollinger deviations, that's a double, and the applied price, which is price close. And then the strategy calls for an entry price, which is just below or above the trigger candle, depending which direction we're going, and a stop loss price, which is just above or below that same trigger candle, depending which direction we're going. So I want to specify the size of that gap that we're just above or below the trigger candle. And I also want to specify a take profit multiplier, which means that my take profit will be a multiple of the stop loss. Now, the default specified for the strategy was one pip or 10 points. So 10 points for the entry gap, 10 points for the stop loss gap and the take profit multiplier 1.0. This is a one to one take profit to stop loss. Now, just while we're looking at these inputs, the original strategy had an option to test that the angle between the fast and the slow moving average was increasing. In my previous video where I ran tests, I found that if I included a test for that angle, I got very few trades. And in fact, for some symbols, I got no trades at all over an entire year. So I just didn't use it. And so here in this code, I haven't included anything for that angle at all. So there is no input here and there's no code further to check for that angle. So that gives me the values to set up three indicators. I'm going to want handles to each of those indicators. And then I'm going to want some arrays where I can store the values that come back from those indicators. I just use a standard naming convention. So I've got a handle to the fast MA, handle to the slow MA, and a handle to the Bollinger. And then the arrays where I'm going to be getting these values back are going to be called values fast MA, values slow, values Bollinger upper, and values Bollinger lower, because I'm going to be getting both the upper and lower values from the Bollinger band. And then I also have an array of type MQL rates. I'm just calling that rates because I want access to the high, low, and close prices of the trigger candle. And the easy way to get that is in the rates array. I then just want two more global variables because I've taken these inputs of gap points and stop loss gap points, and I'm just going to convert those to a double so that I don't need to worry about converting them throughout the code. So that takes care of the global variables I'm going to be using. In the onInit function then, I will be initializing these handles to the indicators. So the handle to the fast moving average, that's just the IMA function, symbol, period. The inputs, the fast MA period, that shift that I'm not using is zero, the method and the applied price. The slow MA is just the same, but here I'm using the slow values. And the handle Bollinger, again, symbol and period, then the Bollinger period. There's also a shift that I'm not using, number of deviations and the Bollinger applied price. Now, although I'm getting two values back from the Bollinger, I only need one handle because it's a single function that can return either the upper or the lower price. When I make the calls to get the values from these handles, I like them to be returned such that element zero of the array, so these arrays, I like element zero to match up with the rightmost candle or the current candle, because that makes more sense to me, given that that candle is typically referred to as candle number zero. If I make no other changes though, that will be the candle that's at array size of these. So I'm just going to turn these into series with the array set as series. So in this way, I know that element number zero of each of these arrays is going to match up with candle number zero, the current candle. And I also said that I want to convert the entry gap and the stop loss gap from points one time only into these two global variables. I'm doing that with a function called points to double. Now this is a standard function that I have and typically it's already inside my template, but because I'm showing this in the video, I didn't include it in the template. I'm going to go to the bottom of the code and write that function now. So points to double, fairly simple function, takes the number of points as an integer and the string symbol which defaults to an empty string. And I'm simply saying if symbol is equal to that empty string, then symbol is equal to 
the current chart symbol. Then I'm calculating the value, which is the number of points cast to a double, because it is coming in as an integer, multiplied by symbol info double, symbol, and symbol underscore point. And that gives me, this symbol info double, gives me the size of a single point. So I'm multiplying the size of a point by the number of points, and that gives me the total value for whatever I've passed into this function. And then I just return that value. And then I just have one more thing that I'm going to do in the onInit function, and that is to set the magic number for all of the future trades. I do that by calling the set expert magic number function on the trade object. And that way all trades that I place in future using this trade object will use this magic number. So next is the on D in it. In the on in it, I opened up three handles to indicators. I just need to remove those in on D in it. And that's simply the indicator release function passing each of the three handles. Uh, it's worth mentioning at this point, you should check that these have returned a valid handle. I'm not doing it in this code. I don't have much error handling here at all. So you should be checking that those have returned a valid handle. Uh, you should be checking things like the slow period is greater than the fast period. Before you place trades, you'll want to have housekeeping functions to check that you have sufficient funds, that the market's open and so on. I'm not including any of that standard housekeeping here. This is the basic expert that you would need if you just want to run the strategy tester. So then down to on tick. I only want to run this once on each new bar. Now, the strategy says that I'm going to be opening a trade based on whether the candle touches the outer Bollinger Band. I know that the candle has touched the outer Bollinger Band before the candle closes, but the strategy also says that the entry points and the stop loss are based on the high and low of that candle, which I don't know until the candle closes. So I really have to wait until that candle closes and check at the beginning of the next candle. So I only want to run this once per bar. To do that, I have an is new bar function, and this is also something that's typically already inside my template, but I'm going to write it here. And if you've seen almost any of my other videos, you've already seen this function many times. So I declare a static date time variable previous bar time. I initialize that using the iTime function for bar number zero, and that gives me the opening time for the current bar but only the first time this function's called. After that, previous bar time will have any value that it had at the end of the last call to this function. I'm also declaring another date time current bar time, and that is always initialized to the opening time for the current bar. So then I simply have to say, if the current bar time is equal to that previous bar time, then no new bar has formed, and I can just return false. If a new bar has formed, then I want to reset the previous bar time equal to the current bar time and return true. So if it's not a new bar, I just return. That's a simple function. Now I want to grab the values from the indicators. So I'm using the copy buffer function for the indicators and the copy rates function for the rates array. So for each of the indicators, I just pass in the handle. And for the Bollinger, I have the same handle for the upper and the lower. I need the buffer number, which for the moving averages is zero because it only has one buffer. For the Bollinger, there are constants defined, upper band and lower band. So those are the buffers for the Bollinger. The next argument is the beginning position. I'm starting at bar number zero. And then the number that I want to copy, two. Uh, because I want bars number zero and one. I actually don't need bar number zero, but I just find it easy to begin at zero and it doesn't really take that much more resource. And I'm storing these values in the arrays for fast MA, slow MA, Bollinger upper and Bollinger lower. Now the copy buffer function returns a number, which is the number of bars that, or the number of values that it has returned. I'm asking for two. So if the result is less than two, then I'm just going to return because it means I don't get enough values back from the copy buffer function to be able to do any further processing. Copy rates function works much the same way, but the arguments here are the symbol and the period, beginning with number zero, two bars into the rates array. And if that returns less than two, then I'll return. And now I'm just going to declare two variables to hold the entry price and the stop loss price. 
and now the code for a short entry. So for a short entry, if the fast MA bar number one is less than the slow MA bar number one, so we're in a downtrend, and the high for rates one is greater than the value Bollinger upper one. So the high price is greater than the upper Bollinger. So we've had a pullback to the upside. If that's true, then the price is equal to the low minus the entry gap, that's the entry price, and the stop loss price is the high plus the stop loss gap. So we're going to be executing a sell stop order. I'm going to be calling a function called open order. This is another custom function, I'll write that in a moment. And I'm passing in the type of the order, sell stop, the price, the stop loss, and I'm also passing in the take profit multiplier, the order size, and the trade comment. These are global variables, so I could simply use the global variables in the open order function, but I prefer to try to restrict the global variables to these event handler type functions, and that way this open order function can become more generic, and if I want to pass values that are not these particular variable names, I can reuse this function in other code, uh, and typically this is inside some kind of function library for me. Just before I write that open order function, I'll just finish off the code for the long entries. The long entries are just the opposite. So we're saying the fast MA is greater than the slow MA and the low price is less than the Bollinger low. And in this case then, the entry price is going to be the high plus the gap and the stop loss will be the low minus the gap. And the open order function is the same, but here I'm passing order type buy stop instead of order type sell stop. So now we'll go and write this open order function. So now the open order function. Here's the beginning of the function. I take the order type, the price and the stop loss price, and then I've got that multiplier number of lots and the comment declaring a variable for take profit and take profit is just price plus price minus stop loss multiplied by that take profit multiplier. Now this works whether it's a long or a short entry. Price minus stop loss is going to be positive if it's a long entry because stop loss will be less than the price and price minus stop loss will be negative if it's a short entry because stop loss will be higher than price. And so when you run the math on this you always get the appropriate take profit price. I do want to make sure though that the price and the stop loss and the take profit, because they are calculated values, I want to make sure that they're appropriate for placing a trade. So I'm going to run them through the normalized double function. So first I just get the number of digits with symbol info integer symbol and symbol underscore digits. I know there are other ways to get this. I just like to use this syntax because it is compatible between MQL4 and 5. And then price, stop loss, and take profit are just normalized double of price, stop loss, take profit for the number of digits. Next, the strategy says that if the order is not executed in the next candle, then the order should be canceled. In my earlier video, I ran the tests. I interpreted that as the next candle being a trigger candle also but I think on reflection that that was incorrect and that it should be any candle should close the order if it's not processed. So what I'm going to do to handle that is use an expiry and I'm going to force the order to expire at the end of its next candle. So the expiry time, date time expiration is I time symbol period zero that gives me the start time for the current candle. So candle number one was the trigger candle. Candle number zero is the one that's just opened. I'm getting the beginning time for this candle plus period seconds of the current chart period. And that will give me the beginning time of the next candle that hasn't opened yet. And that's where I want this to expire. And then all that's left is to actually place the order. So I'm using the trade object and the order open function on the trade object, passing the chart symbol, 
type, which comes from the order type here, number of lots. There is a limit price that I can pass in, but I'm not using that, so I'm just setting it to zero. The entry price, stop loss price, and take profit price. This will be a valid order until the specified time, and the specified time is this expiration, which we've calculated here. So this will expire at the beginning of the next candle, and then the trade comment. The magic number was already filled into the trade at the beginning in the on init function, so that's everything that this order open function needs. That returns a boolean, so I've got if not trade dot order open, then I use this print format statement to say that the order failed for that symbol, the type, price, stop loss, and take profit. And that is everything I think that I need, so let me just check that I don't have any typing errors. That compiled. I'll go back to MetaTrader 5 and I'll just run this through once in the strategy tester just to make sure it works. So I have the strategy tester ready, Bollinger Bounce, Euro USD 4 hour, which is the suggested time frame from the strategy uh, for the year from 1st of January 22 to the 1st of January 23. And I'm not running in visual mode, I just want to see that this will get to the end. So there I can see this has been taking trades, so I've got a backtest result there. And so that's it for this. As I said, this is just the code to enable the strategy tester to run. It is basic code. You will want to add some error handling and some additional functions to set your lot sizing, perhaps. You may also want to change the way the strategy operates. You might want to, for example, set the exit at the midpoint of the Bollinger Band rather than based on the size of the candle that touched the Bollinger. But this is the basic code that you can use for the Bollinger Bounce strategy. Hope it was useful to you, and until next time, thank you for watching.